Today we are reading from James chapter 1, verse 21 to verse 25. Therefore, laying aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Okay? So you see, my friend, this letter is already written to believers. And uh, if you read James chapter 1 from starting, then you will understand that already uh, James, a bond servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, he is already writing to the 12 strikes, to, to, to the 12 tribes who are scattered abroad. And then he already talks about uh, profiting from trials, talks about being under trials, talks about temptations. And now here he's saying something in verse 21. He's saying, therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul. That means, my friend, though each one of us has accepted Jesus as a savior and though each one of us is uh, calls ourselves a believer or a Christian, we still need to work on saving our soul. Now, you might say, uh, brother, is my soul not saved? Yeah, for you, the, when you're asking this question, you're basically asking me, brother, is my soul not going to heaven? <laughs> okay, so that is not what here it says. It says the implanted word which is able to save your soul. That means every issue that is undealt with in the soul realm will bring death in the physical realm. Okay, let me uh, repeat it again. Every issue that is not undealt with in the soul realm will bring disease, decay, destruction and death in the physical realm. That's why when someone is having unforgiveness, it is not wrong for them to say, for us to say, probably this unforgiveness is related to the sickness in your body. Why? Because this unforgiveness is in the realm of the soul. But the sickness is in the realm of the body. Now, when the person is saved, saved means what? Saved from corruption. Now, unforgiveness is not a characteristic of the incorruptible God. It is a characteristic of the corruption of this world. So that is why when a person is saved, he should also be saved from unforgiveness. So, you know, when he is free from the soul issue, he will be free from the physical issue. So if you're somebody today who's facing uh, challenges in the physical realm, it might be poverty, it might be sickness, it might be some kind of a problem, please check if there is a soul issue in your life which you're not willing to deal with, right? And sometimes the issue might not be direct. Like you might say, uh, brother, my sickness is because of high blood sugar. And you know, I have, I have controlled eating sugars or I've controlled eating sweets, but my blood sugar doesn't become normal. Reason is you think it is only because of sugar that you have diabetes, but there might be a soul issue in your life that is hindering the healing from flowing in your body. Okay, so let's read this verse again. Therefore, laying aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. You see, my friend, when our thoughts, when our thoughts and our deeds do not align with the word of God, there will always be an overflow of things in our soul that will keep our soul satisfied, but not with the word. That is the time we lose our hunger. That is the time we lose the thirst. That is the time we lose the eagerness, the passion to hear from God directly, to receive a word into our life. Okay, And that is the time we might not have space in us to receive the implanted word. Now, you know, uh, it, uh, like I have two or three missing tooth. I've been to a dentist a lot of times. So I understand what is an implant. Okay, when they say a tooth implant, I understood what it is. Now here it says a uh, implanted word. That means what? The word will be planted. The word will be planted because something is missing in your life. Okay. And this word that is planted, when it grows up, it will ensure that there will be nothing missing in your life. The word is planted because there is something broken in your life, 
but when this word is planted and then when it grow this word bears fruit in you it will ensure that there is nothing broken in your life this word is planted because there is something lacking in your life but when this word is planted and it bears fruit it will ensure that there is nothing lacking in your life so before i go into the next part of what it means to do the word i just want to tell you if there is no storage space for the word in your soul okay now listen to me everyone is hearing the word by the ear but not everyone is receiving the soul the word into their heart and reason the word doesn't have space in your heart is because your heart is overflowing with wickedness and your heart is overflowing with filthiness now anything that is not in alignment with the word of god though the world might term it as good though the world might say that this is acceptable yet yet that is filthiness and it is an overflow of wickedness that is stopping the word from taking root in our heart so first thing we have to ensure is that our heart is free of things that are overflowing and that are stopping us from receiving this word and when we receive this word this word has the potency to save our soul this word has the potency to heal our soul this word has the potency to strengthen our soul this word has the potency to give courage to the soul this word has the potency to give life to the soul this ha- word has the potency to make the soul rise up from where it is right now and have a living hope in god have a living hope in god okay so now let's read the next verse first it says we have to receive the implanted word okay we have to get rid of things and then we have to receive the implanted word was 22 but be a doers of the word and not hearers only so once you receive the word you need to do the word you need to do the word now was 23 if any one is a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like a man observing his face in a natural mirror was 24 for he observes himself goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was so what does it mean to do the word to do the word means to not forget who the word said we are now the word is a mirror and the word is showing who we are but when we don't look into the mirror when you are not looking into the physical bible when you are not in your time of meditation when you are not in the time where you are uh, reminding the revelation in your mind and when you face the real time circumstances situations of your life when you start receiving messages from the bank when you start hearing what people are talking about you you need to ensure that you do not lose focus of who you saw you were when you saw the word because when you saw the word the word said you are in this world but you are not of this world when you saw the word the word said though man may not look at your though man sees you by your outward appearance god looks at your heart when you look at the word the word says that you are the beloved son of god and god is well pleased in you and then he is moving all things he is working all things to work for your good So now when you look at something and it looks like things are not going right for you if you are a doer of the word you will not see how the situation might affect you but you will go back and recollect the original image the original identity the revelation that the word said that you are so when when whenever we say we have to do the word yes we have to do the commandments we have to follow the instructions of grace but more than that doing has a lot to do with beholding it is not to forget who the word said you are it is not to forget who the word said you are when temptation of sin comes you need to tell yourself hey i am dead to sin how can i respond does a dead man respond to an invitation a dead man does not respond to an invitation so how can i respond to a temptation because i am dead to sin that's what you got to tell yourself okay 
when there's an opportunity to receive more of the spirit when there's an opportunity to, to go into the secret place when there's an opportunity to receive in worship when there's an opportunity to connect to god when there's an opportunity to have an heavenly encounter you need to say this is my time you cannot say oh i don't see anything special but you need to say this is my time and you need to say now i am alive in christ that means my connection my communication my access to christ is fully active and without hindrance now beholding beholding produces transformation beholding produces transformation so the word, revelation of the word comes to you so that when the word is implanted in you it will save your soul by transforming your soul into the same image and likeness of the lord jesus christ and you know jesus was never an orphan spirit jesus was never victimized jesus could not be terrorized he could not be terrorized by the demons he could not be terrorized by the wind he could not be terrorized by hunger he could not be terrorized by lack okay why because jesus knew he was a victor and he knew he was a victor because he belonged to someone and because he knew that he belonged to daddy god he knew that he could not be a victim but he's going to be a victor so every time the revelation of the word comes it reveals to us who we are and to be a doer of the word is to not forget who we are and who's we are when we face real time situations of our life it is not only in the time of prayer not only in the time of reading the word not only in the time of meditation but when we face the real life we have to remember who we are now imagine this my friend imagine uh, you look white and fair and somebody comes and tells you oh you're so dark and as soon as they say you're so dark you will not say oh is it let me go and get a facial done let me go and check myself in a mirror you immediately say no and british in color if you know if you remember okay <laughs> i am sure you'll remember because we see our faces daily in the mirror or at least in our phones these days right so you will not accept that person's interpretation of what kind of color you are okay and in the same way bible says you have an identity and beholding the identity of who you are in christ is obedience to the word of god so the word which became flesh and the flesh that was crucified and the crucified flesh that resurrected glorified is the same word that is speaking to us today and is inviting us giving us an invitation so that we might be transformed into the image and likeness of the same word okay now let's read verse 25 here it says but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the word this one will be blessed in what he does okay now listen to this carefully it says who is a doer of the word because many times you know we have just changed uh, taken that tag line saying be a not a listener of the word doer of the word and we don't define listening and doing not doing according to what it says here it says here but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty now the law of moses revealed to us that we will always be weak and we will always fall short and that we will be under condemnation and then we will be uh, you know it gives us an impression that we will receive the wrath of god or punishment but the perfect law of liberty who is the perfect law of liberty now there is one law that Christ drives my life and that is the law of life in christ jesus so who is the perfect law of liberty he is jesus christ the perfect law of liberty is jesus christ so what does the word say he who looks into the perfect law of liberty that means what i see that christ became flesh in his crucifixion he has redeemed me in his resurrection he has made me alive in his ascension he has he has co raised me with him far above principality power dominion and authority in his sitting and his glorification i am co seated with him as a co heir and christ is here to rule and reign forever so i need to live to rule and reign forever when i see this and i and i ensure 
that no matter what I'm going through, it's not only when I receive a good prophecy in the Holy Spirit festival, it's not only when I receive a good prophecy when a man of God speaks to me, it's not only when somebody picks me up in the Zoom call and says, sister, this is the word for you. It's not only when somebody calls me and says, brother, I got a word for you. But all the time, the person who is looking into the perfect law of liberty and say, this is who I am, who this is whose I am, and because I am his, and because I am in him, I will be like this. I am an overcomer. I am a victor. I am going to see myself through. I am going to be above the situations and not below the situations. Such a person is a person who is doing the work, not the one who says, I have done all the commandments. The person who is doing this will surely do all the commandments. The person who is doing this will surely keep morality. But more importantly, above all these things, this is the person who is not willing to let go of who he is and whose he is apart from what he saw in the perfect law of liberty. So the revelation of Jesus Christ, the revelation of the word became flesh, the revelation of the flesh being crucified, the revelation that the flesh that was crucified that uh, you know took our sin onto itself made us righteous that that flesh has resurrected the revelation that this resurrected flesh has made us alive unto God the revelation that this resurrected flesh is dead unto sin the revelation that this resurrected flesh is far above principality power dominion and authority the revelation that this resurrected flesh is now a joint heir with Christ Jesus this revelation is what I need to keep on seeing and keep on beholding. Can I tell you, my friend, most of the chumma chumma, small, small temptations that come, most of the tensions that you call tensions, tensions, and you keep calling the prayer tower, all those things are not doing anything. They are just stopping you from beholding yourself and looking at yourself into the mirror called Jesus Christ so that your transformation will be stopped. Because if your transformation is stopped, you will stop behaving like Christ. If your transformation is stopped, you will stop being Christ to the situations around you. If your transformation is stopped, you will stop being Christ to the circumstances around you. And sometimes we get so easily tempted, you know, one bill comes and we start thinking, oh, how am I going to pay the bill? And then we turn our face away. We forget that God said that he's going to provide for us graciously. God said, I take care of the birds and the animals who mean nothing to me, but you are my son and daughter. How much more will I take care of you? You know, all the small temptations that become, we are just bothered about how we meet this need, how I get rid of this headache, this backache, and how I can be free from this. But we don't realize that we are here to be transformed. We are not here to be conformed. Okay? What does conform mean? We are not here to become another victim and going around God and doing puja and saying, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. No, my friend, you are not here to be a victim. You are here to be a victor because you are not born from the earth. You are not born of the earth. You are not born to be bound by the circumstances and the situations of this earth. You are born from above. You are born from above to rule and reign. And the small, small temptations, the small, small small things that you call tensions, the small, small things that you call headaches, the small, small things that you call, you know, uh, uh, mountains, the small, small things are doing only one thing. They are stopping your inner focus from beholding Christ because the small, small things know that when the power of Christ invades you, it will invade everything around you. So the only way it can stop you from making this power flow through you is by shifting your focus onto it. Because now when you shift your focus onto it, you are defining yourself as a victim. While Christ says, I have made you a victor forever. While Christ says, I have made you an overcomer forever. While Christ says, I have made you a king and a priest. While Christ says, I call you royalty, these things that we call tensions, or sometimes what we call prayer requests. Prayer request. Your small prayer request is doing a big damage by causing you not to behold Christ and to behold yourself as a victim. And that is why devil is sometimes happy when you go from one prayer request to another prayer request because the devil and his, you know, his, 
his small bat is singing ringa ringa roses pocket full of roses one prayer request over this boy is busy with another prayer request and he doesn't have time for meditation he doesn't have time for pure day and all the time we are saying oh i am a doer of the word i am moral life i am keeping all the commandments and god is saying oh my god i already justified you righteous not so that you will run for a report but you will run from the report you will run for the promise the saints of the old testament the hebrews those who were in hebrews chapter 11 they were running for a good report my friend we already got the good report we are already justified we are already redeemed we have already been given a name we have already been accepted in the family we have already been sealed with the holy spirit we have been sealed the seal doesn't come on us when we do something good but god is so sure that he is going to co partner with us god is so sure of the resurrection power working in us that he says i have sealed you till the day of redemption now the only person being a hindrance is you because you allow every small thing to define you and let me tell you this thing my friend the measure of the problem that can distract you will show you how unfocused you are on being transformed sometimes a phone bill sometimes a credit card bill sometimes a headache sometimes a backache sometimes 10 people telling bad about you sometimes your neighbors or your family members gossiping about you if these things are stopping you from beholding yourself from seeing yourself as who christ is as who you are in christ then sorry to tell you you have already been tempted sorry to tell you you already given into the temptation because that's the temptation bible says don't be with it bible says whatever happens make sure you are a doer of the word that means what whatever happens don't stop looking into the perfect law of liberty whatever happens don't stop looking at glorified christ whatever happens don't stop looking at who god says you are to him and who he says you are in his son christ jesus whatever happens don't forget that the same power that raised christ from the dead dwells on the inside of you whatever happens don't forget that you've been sealed with the holy spirit for a purpose whatever happens don't forget that the gifts and callings of god are without repentance and god is giving you a daily invitation god is giving you an hourly invitation god is giving you an invitation in everything that you do in life to co partner with him and sometimes needs tensions small small aches sicknesses are only doing the work of a of a rat they just going around your house and you know when the rat goes around your house what do you do in the hall or the bedroom you just turn and see right if a lizard is going on the wall what do you do immediately you look like this but what is happening as you look at this distractions you are stopping yourself from beholding the powerful christ you're stopping yourself from beholding the glorified christ and because you do not behold constantly you are not transformed but you are being conformed continuously to being a victim the reason jesus was effective in his ministry the reason circumstances could not cripple jesus the reason jesus did not start fearing the situations and circumstances is because he used to behold the father and he used to come and when he saw a sickness he would recollect what he the nature of the father is he would recollect what he would see his father doing and then he would do what his father did why because his inner focus or the or you know in other words the cd that was running in him was more powerful than the circumstance that was around him if the circumstance around you is able to reprogram you then you know that your focus is too low and i pray for you my friend that you will have the understanding you will have the enlightenment that you will not let go of who god says you are and who you are in christ and why you have been sealed with the holy spirit because if you are able to behold continuously nothing can stop you from being transformed 
but if you keep on giving in to victimization by circumstances situations words of people and you know different different kind of things you might come out of it and you might also have a good testimony but then you are really losing out on being transformed you are still a victim who is conformed to this world and that is not what is god's idea for your life because bible says faith overcomes the world that means what you are a kind of victor who can overcome any kind of victimization that is there in the world you are a kind of victor who can overcome any kind of victimization that is there in the world victimization might be by the abundance of certain things or by the lack of certain things but you are a kind of victor who can overcome any kind of victimization in this world let's just pray my friend father in jesus name i thank you for everyone under the influence of my voice i pray father as your word says that we need to lay aside all kind of filthiness and worldliness so that we might have space so that we might have we we might have that readiness so that we might show that humility so that we might not be so full of our attitude that we cannot receive your implanted word father help us to be rid of such things and help us to be vessels who are always hungry who are always eager who are always thirsty who are always longing to receive the word so that your word that is implanted on the inside of us will bear fruit and it will ensure that we are saved from every soul issue it will ensure that we are not victim to any circumstances or situations in this world it will ensure that there will be nothing lacking nothing missing nothing broken in our physical life it will ensure that we are living a life of abundance that we are overflowing and that we are thriving father i bless you for everybody on this call i pray strength i pray focus i pray they will understand that beholding that beholding your son crucified your son resurrected your son ascended and your son glorified is how they will also ascend and they will also rule and reign over every situation and over every circumstance in this life i bless you in jesus name i pray amen amen amen